So you can see on the outer tie rod that there are quite a bit of bump steer correction washers put in. As a general rule of thumb when designing the kits, it's a little more complex than this, but I'm gonna simplify it. The difference in height from the steering rack to the lower control arm mount. So the center line of the steering rack to the center line of the lower control arm, that distance relative we want to make that same distance between the outer tie rod and the lower control arm now i say there's more to it than that because caster raises and lowers the outer tie rod and a couple other kinematics change it so it's not exactly going to be that but i can already tell that he probably had some bump steer issues just based on the difference between these two points and these two points and right off the bat that probably would have been corrected just by reducing the caster because that would have lowered the outer tie rod relative to the control arm and it probably would reduce the amount of bump steer that he may have been experiencing so we're going to make sure usually on our kits there is a minor amount of bump steer adjustment um, whether it be flipping the heim joint because the offset spacers are different heights or moving the ackerman plates um, those are small ways because generally we put our kits right where the bump steer is neutral and then if one guy's running six caster and the other guy's running four he'll be able to compensate for that bump steer just by moving around either the misalignment spacers or the Ackerman plates so we're gonna do the same thing with this um, it's just another thing that I noticed while I'm taking stuff apart little baby knuckle since it's an all-wheel drive they have the the end of the axle just tightened in so the bearing doesn't fall apart pretty simple and then you can see where they had drilled the tie rod not that it was it didn't get a ton of angle but it was kind of limited by the um, control arm anyways but if they had to put it further this way his Ackerman would have been uh, would have been better. So we're gonna go ahead and scan this, and then we're gonna build the geometry that we should have for this car into a new knuckle. I feel like a mechanic. What good is that? That doesn't usually happen because there's usually an axle connected to it. Great bearing though. My big green pliers. I think Cam has, do you have your own tie rod pliers? Red ones? Whoa! I saw them. Whoa! We gotta get a sign in, sign out sheet. Oh! Come on, man. I have my own, but Cam's are much closer. I'm dope. That's a good pair of pliers. No, it's a good pair of mitts. It's not mitts, good pliers. If you're not gonna use it, you're gonna lose it. We can zap the bearing off, and it's gonna give us all the data we need to reverse engineer this and make a sick angle kit. I don't know what year this is, but it is for between 08 and 14, 2014, 2008 to 2014, I believe. And then 2015, they went to the new style and before 08, they were like all the same as well. Like Hawkeye, Blob Eye, whatever the other eyes are. They all have names. Huh? Duh. Qua. Cat. Candy canes. Candy canes. <laughs> Little baby knuckle. 
So cute, so small. But super strong, OEM knuckles. Forged steel, people say you can't weld these because they're cast iron or something, they're not. They're forged steel. I'm not saying go around and weld them, but they're very high quality steel. Um, if anyone didn't know that, uh, they are. So stop saying they're cast iron, if you do. Anyways, it's a nice little adapter. Somebody machined. It's got a little relief for the bolt. Bolt goes through, that sits in. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do double shear plate with one bolt going through, but they did a good job anyways for that. Yeah, I wonder if V-Man's got the scanner going already. Because if he does, throw some magnet targets on this and scan her up. Zero, 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 one degrees off in fusion. And then it just, Everything's when you fun. when you want to project geometry, a circle would be slightly oval. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's just important to do that. I've gotten good at doing these, but <laughs> they're pretty tricky. Oh, like yeah. There's usually not enough data to select it with right. the quick select. So you have to like paint three areas. Okay, that's pretty cool though. And then you can orient it to that. So it's a little brush select. Yeah. Like if you select it, it'll draw like a crazy circle. All right, so using the scan data that we collected, we were able to generate a entity file, which is basically a step file, of all of the important parts of the knuckle, like holes, tapers, planes, or flat surfaces, like where the brakes mount or where the bearing mounts, and so on and so forth and we're able to use those points and overlay them with a mesh file, which is basically the shape and structure of the entire knuckle. You can't make a solid out of the full knuckle in the computer because there's so much data that goes into generating that mesh that if you actually made it a solid surface, it would like crash the computer. Um, some computers could handle it, but ours, uh, it's just much better if you just make it a mesh and I'll show you what I mean in a second. We basically scanned the lower control arm mounts on the car and then we scanned the control arm knuckle and then he had a, a brand of control arms, I'm not sure what they were, but we basically are gonna overlay our arm over top of that one because we wanna see, we know where his wheel is contacting that arm and we wanna see where we can create clearance for a new uh, control arm to clear a, a bunch of steering angle. Uh, we're going to be pushing around 70 degrees on this kit. We have the newly generated uh, knuckle. It looks honestly pretty simple. Um, the knuckle was actually quite simple and we were able to do some unique things like make this plate uh, a combination plate where it uses the top to hold the control arm mount and then it uses the, it basically creates the bottom of the tie rod mount. And then you can see we have our adjustable Ackerman and so on. So if we overlay the mesh of this, you can see the amount of roll center we were able to create, which basically from the ball joint pivot point was about here, we're moving it down to here. So we're creating a 50 millimeter drop knuckle. And the same goes for the original tie rod was there. He had relocated the tie rod to here and still had an Ackerman problem where there was way too much positive Ackerman. So we shortened the ratio further to get more steering angle. Um, and we also added the 50 millimeter drop for bump steer correction. And we're gonna have a little bit of bump steer correction adjustment here as well, just based off of the ride height. So if we look at our views from exact 90 degree profiles, you can really start to see where we're moving the tie rod and how it's going to change the geometry of the Ackerman specifically. We can go into details on a lot of other of the kinematics, but we're just gonna go on the basics here and, and what we're trying to achieve. So again, there's the middle, there's the original tie rod pickup. Here is the relocated tie rod pickup, which just simply 
reduced his steering ratio so that he could get more angle, but it didn't change anything to do with the Ackerman. And then you can see this is where our new adjustments are going to be. Um, slight positive Ackerman being right here, and then zero and uh, negative Ackerman options are going to be available with this uh, adjustment, and that's simply going to be done by just changing out Ackerman plates. The strut mount is going to hold it in the same. The kingpin inclination is going to be slightly altered, but nothing crazy. Um, then otherwise the bearing and calipers and everything are going to bolt right up. Um, the only thing we need to do is machine a spacer to equal the distance that uh, is between the caliper mount and the bearing mount, which is this distance here. So we're going to easily be able to do that with our CNC machine after we water jet cut a flange to match the bearing. And then we're going to face it down to this height and that's going to do it. So that's the knuckle. On the lower control arm, we see that we're overlaying the original one and we have the suspension mounting points located here. This is going to be the center of our heim joint. You can see it's actually a bit off from what uh, the previous arm was. I don't know, they, they stacked washers. I guess that's how they were able to adjust the caster. We're not gonna be doing it that way. We're doing it a different way. So overlaying the control arm, I have a bit of a gap here. This is going to be in this slot here. So just ignore that. But basically our contact point was right on this area of the control arm. And based on the size of the wheel, I mean, we can't actually connect the knuckle and the wheel here, um, but doing this on a timely manner, this is what, this is what we're gonna have. Um, the wheel pocket would be right in this area. So you're gonna have tire, uh, rim, or wheel, and then this is actually going to be uh, open space, which is basically the inside of the wheel, which isn't gonna be an interference point. So we're gonna get a lot more steering angle out of this design versus the, uh, what he had on it before. And we're gonna be using our high strength alloy steel for this control arm to, to maintain the strength, to reduce the weight and make it a much more adjustable option. Here, we're gonna have a double adjuster fitted where we'll be able to turn it and lengthen or shorten this joint, which is going to give us a caster pivot and basically give us on-car caster adjustment that we're gonna be able to use. Uh, the sway bar mount is in the same location and we're gonna have a uniball welded on the end here. And we're not gonna be using like this factory style pickup point. Um, we're just gonna have a bolt with a double shear and two washers there. So that's pretty much the basics of it. We're gonna be using, we're gonna make a new tie rod, outer tie rod mount. We're gonna be making an adapter to go to the factory inner tie rods. And yeah, for the most part, we're gonna be able to throw this together and just based off of um, having the car on the hoist and having the scan data on my computer, we can pretty much guarantee success on the first try. Whereas years ago when I would do this uh, manually and basically create these points of reference from the chassis and then input them into the computer and then create the control arms and try to simulate the wheel without having any sort of scan data from the chassis. Um, this just makes it much smoother process. So that's like a very quick overview. I put quite a bit of time into designing these. So yeah, we're going to show you guys basically getting it cut, welding it together, powder coating, assembling, making the misalignment spacers, blah, 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 a lot of stuff. And then ultimately putting it on the car and we're going to do a comparison between a engineered angle kit versus a modified or put together angle kit that uh, without the proper knowledge or understanding, these mistakes are really easy to make and not understanding how these things work on a chassis, it's really easy to make these mistakes. So this is gonna give you guys some really good firsthand insight on what works, what doesn't, how to do it. Not that you're going to be doing it yourself, but you're definitely gonna know what goes into it and why our products work the way that they do. So the last step after showing you guys everything is to create DXF files of these parts and solid models of the parts so that we can send them over to our guys at the water jet and the CNC machine so that we can cut them out from a plate of alloy steel. And then the boys in the welding department can weld on the 
threaded bungs, adapters, whatever they need to do, the Uniball cups, bearings, etc. And then we can start to put this whole thing together for the final assembly and install. So that is the end of this video. There's a lot of information. I know a lot of you guys are gonna love it. Some of you guys are gonna hate it, but that's the nature of it. This is what I do on a daily basis with anything from like little small dual caliper brackets, very simple compared to stuff like this, to stuff like this, and then even more complicated things than this. So that's just a quick insight. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys on episode three where we do the install.